This is a uh, fly originally tied by a gentleman called Arthur MacDonald. Now Arthur's a really nice, a good tire. Uh, ties a lot of this style of fly, very good. Uh, I, I certainly like them. And these, this style especially works really well for well brown trout in the locks, the hill locks. Uh, the hook I'm using, yeah, I'm using a Kamasan, a B160. In this case it's a size 10. Size 10, basically the way the hook is, it's a wide gape hook. Shank length is equivalent to a size 12, but the gape is equivalent to a size 10. Ideal for muddlers. Now the thread I'm going to be using is a uni thread, 8 in black. I simply start the thread at the eye and we work my way down. Now I'm actually going to tie in the ribbon the way down. Just to save a bit of time, save a wee bit of bulk. So we tie it in at this point here, about maybe three mil or so down from the eye. Now to stop it slipping, what I'm going to do is just put a wee touch of super glue there. And then work my way down and come round the bend slightly because I'm going to put a small tag in with some seals for. Now I'm using this, this is a colour, normal red, but this is a an enhanced red as I call it, it's called flame. What I normally do is dye it hot orange first and then add in fluorescent red just to lift the colour. It's a colour I like and it's ideal for the Arthur's fly. So what I'm going to do is lightly dub it on. Slide it up. Start it off. Now I'm just going to make sure it's caught and we build up a nice deep colour. There we go. Now I want it a wee bit loose, so what you can do is stroke it back with your fingers, making sure the fibres are laying towards the back. And we tie in some dyed black seals for. Now you can use a sub, you don't need to use seals for. Tie up to sell, you can use SLF or something like that. I'll dub that one. And we'll roll you up. You want to be sort of working some of the, the far into the hackle when you wind it down. Now leave you leave enough room obviously for the head. Two to three mil anyway. Maybe if we don't need it. Now the, the body hackle is a, you want a well marked furnace cork hackle. Now I'm using a, a saddle. It's just a Met saddle. Use whatever you can get. You can use a, just looking for a nice, well marked, good length or a fibre with nice length to suit the size I'm tying. There you go. Just remove the fluff. In. Now at this point what I like to do is make sure this wax on my thread. I like to do a turn or so at the top and then work my way down. Now being a muddler, 45 turns. Now turn the rib, just bring the rib to this side, just round the sort of half turn first and then tie it down, tie it in with the the hackle in with the rib as you wind up. Looking four to five turns anyway. And you can remove that. If you don't want to do it then just wait till you've actually tied the rib off. Bring this up, bring your rib up. 90 degree bend into the thread, make sure it's tied in. Trim the waist away. And then tidy the area up ready for your deer here. Yeah. Now what I'm going to do is I say I'm going to bring out some of the fur and use some velcro and just basically tap it with the, the velcro, don't sort of scrub it too much. And this will grab the odd fibre of the dubbing and blend it into the into the hackle. And as you can see it's got a nice mix blend right through it. And that's what you're looking for. There's plenty of light going to come through the fly and fish can see it. Now, we want a white deer here, a belly deer here. This one's from Wopsy, so I'm going to form a collar 
using the tips. So make sure you take enough off to form the collar. Maybe as heavy as light as you want. Now cut it right close to the skin and remove the day hair. But now what I do is just twist my finger and thumb to open out these fibres and you'll see this fine thing here that you have to remove if you want to stack it. I'm going to stack it so I get the tips lined up. Use a fine comb and brush them out as well. So tips in first. Tap on your desk. Now you can see this patch I've got here is quite long. And it's a shame to waste this hollow fibre down the bottom. We can use this for the front part of the head. So what I'm going to do first is to tie it in. Now, you want these fibres slightly longer than the, the hackle fibres. And you want to roll it all the way around. So get your length. Set it on the top. Come round with a couple of loose turns. And then allow the deer here to roll round the shank all the way. A couple of turns in there. Now that'll hold because the thread's wax, so I'll not slip or pull out. Now what I want to do is basically use up my deer here. I don't want to throw away good stuff. So I'm going to trim this about half. These are the ends I trimmed off, which I'm going to form the front, on the front of the head. So I'm going to draw this back. So I'll go back to your bob and hold the thread tight. Two or three turns in front. And then again, I'm going to do the same again, set this on the top, and then come round a couple of turns, and slowly allow the thread to twist the deer hair around. Just run it through, keep, it, keep the thread nice and tight. As I say the thread's waxed, so there's plenty of grip. And then we want to stroke these fibres back to reveal the eye. So then we can bring the thread to the eye. Always keeping the thread tight, don't let this the bobbin go. Get a good half a dozen plus turns in there. Draw back the deer here. Quick finish. Put my nail in the eye, you can tighten up that quick finish there. Trim away the thread. And there we are. That's your muddler head. Now the style Arthur likes, and I like it as well, is to have a nice swept back type look to the D here. Not too much of a perfect ball shape, which is okay maybe for certain patterns, but for these wild trout you want it a nice swept back look. Now the way to do that is to start by sweeping it back itself. You can see all the cut ends are set out anyway, so we can trim them away. But we want to slightly taper it, so what I like to do, cut a pair of scissors, Nice small pair, and then if you can rotate your fly, it makes it easier. Now I'm using just basically the the eye, of the, the hook as a, as a guide, and the curve of the scissors. Slowly work your way around. Depending on how big a head that you want, you can always. Make it smaller if you want it smaller. Just take your time. Saying what you're way around. Just be careful you don't cut away your collar or deer here. You'll see the cut end now. If you feel they're going to get there, so what you do is lift these out. Away. They will come away quite easy. From the fly itself. And then what I like to do is just sort of push the scissors up into them. Because they, they trim very easy, so... Just push it towards the back of the fly. So you get a kind of tapered cut, if you want to call it that. By holding them like this, you're only going to cut the ones you're holding and not the actual call it, or any hackle fibres anyway. Then we can go back round and see what we've done. So I'm going to 
Two bit too long, so we can trim them out. You may have to get around two or three times. That's just deer here for you. A quick look. You see, you will go around two or three times just to get the shape that you like. And there we go, and that's Arthur McDonald's Westy. Uh, there is one. Uh, there is quite a few slight variants of the fly. Some really nice ones as well, and all worth dying. So if you if you go into Facebook, you'll find Arthur, and you'll see all these flies. So I hope you enjoyed that. So all I have to do is you varnish into the eye. Don't be shy with it. Let's get it in there. You can clean it out. So use a dubbing needle or a piece of wire or whatever, a feather or something. And there we go. And that's Arthur's wasting.